Advanced Financial Modeling Topic 1, Estimating Asset Returns and an Introduction to Creating User-Defined Functions Using VBA. Copyright Lou Gaddis. Resources for this topic include Financial Modeling, 4th Edition by Simon Beninga, the following chapters. Chapter 1 covers basic financial calculations, including internal rate of return, which we'll use in this topic. Chapter 3 has a section on calculating WAC, and we'll be using the beta section. Chapter 33 shows Excel functions. We will be using regressions. Chapter 35 has a lot of good, interesting uh, Excel hints. And Chapter 36 will be the last section of this uh, topic. We will talk about user-defined functions with VBA. We're going to start with the Topic 1 Excel start file that will be used for all three sections. And our learning objectives. We're going to compute the historical and theoretical asset returns and create user-defined functions. Specifically, we're going to have five sections. We're going to first compute historical annualized returns using monthly asset prices. Then we will estimate future returns using the CAPM and Global CAPM models. Topic three will estimate future returns using the Fama French three-factor model. Topic four, we're going to estimate returns using fundamental analysis and IRR of forecasted cash flows. And topic five will create user-defined functions. So let's get on with computing historical returns using monthly asset prices. Let's go to our spreadsheet and talk about the data. So here's our start file. Start file has dates here and monthly prices for Capital One, stock symbol COF, Walmart, stock symbol WMT, a brewing company, stock symbol brew, SPY, which is a uh, S&P 500 uh, ETF, which basically tracks the 500 largest com uh, companies in the U.S. IOO, which is a global S&P index, so it's a it's some of the biggest uh, companies in the world. EEM is an uh, ETF that tracks the emerging market index. EFA is an ETF that tracks the uh, a developed market index minus the U.S. and Canada, also called EFA. And by the way, the emerging market index is often called EMA. We got the 10-year monthly bond yield. We have some Fama French data we'll talk about later. We have the current risk-free rate, which is the 10-year Treasury. So that would be my long-term risk-free rate of 270 on the day uh, this was produced. And we had T-bill rates. We're about 216. The spreadsheet also goes out far to the right. We're going to fill in some of this data later. So let's get started. One thing before we start any further, I want to talk about Excel styles. If we go back to our spreadsheet, you'll notice that this color here is a style. So if I were to collect, uh, select any column, or I'm sorry, any cell, like this one right here, and I go home, cell styles, I could give it a color or a style of input. And you'll notice any time in this course in which I put in data, I enter numbers, not formulas, I will use the input style. I'll generally also use the calculation style. So let me just put a formula in here. I'll just have a link to this cell here. And that right there is a style, and that's going to be calculation style. Also, if I use a, an additional style I'll often use is output. So this is generally another calculation, but this is really the, uh, the culminating uh, calculation for the, a particular section, whereas calculation might be some intermediate calculations. So let me just get rid of that. So let's do this first. Let's calculate the historical discrete monthly and annual returns for these seven assets. Again, that's Capital One, Walmart, Brew, SPY, S&P 500, Global S&P 500, EMA, and EFA. So I'm going to go to the spreadsheet. I'm going to zoom out a little bit by holding down my control button and playing and moving up the trackball on my mouse a little bit. And I'll zoom over or move over to this area right here. So this is going to be Capital One, monthly return. So I'm going to take the price in 
February 2019, that's the month end closing price, minus the January price, and I'll close off that bracket. So it's equals open bracket, the February price minus the January price, divided by the January price. So that's new minus old over old, or P1 minus P0 over P0. I'll hit enter. And there is my first calculation. That is COF, uh, COS return for February. I'm then going to copy that down by dragging down that cell. So now I'll have the calculations for the last five years of monthly returns. I'll then hit Control C and copy that down for the other six assets, or copy that over the other six assets. So now I have monthly returns for Capital One, Walmart, Brew, SPY, S&P, Global 100, EMA, and EFA. I'll now calculate the historical annualized returns over this five-year period. So I'm just going to take use an Excel built-in function equals average open bracket. I'll then take the first capital one return, hold my shift, and then the down arrow. I'm sorry, I have to use control shift and then my down arrow. That'll go to the bottom of the series. So I, I held down control shift down, close that, That'll be the average monthly return, and then multiply times 12. I'll then turn that into a percent. So I have a monthly, or I'm sorry, an annualized return of 6.03% over this five-year period by taking the average of the 12, I'm sorry, the average of the monthly returns times 12. I'll then copy this over, and now I have the prior five years returns for these seven assets. Looks like ranging from 288 to 1171. And there's the results. Now if I had weekly data, I would multiply the average weekly return times 52 to get an annualized number. And if I had daily data, I would multiply times 252 which is a commonly used number of trading days in a year, especially in stock markets. So that completed topic one, section one, computing historical annual returns using monthly asset prices.